Ah, uh, boss. Yes, Deacon. Ah, uh, Deacon has an idea. Well, go on then. Ah, uh, well, little signs they they say X on them. So I I think what we need to do is is put all those all the stones in an X pa pattern on on the plates. Yes, but uh, well, I suppose it's worth a try, Deacon. Yes, but Dick, you see, the problem is that um, we don't have enough stone. We don't have enough stones at all. There just there aren't any. We, we've been missing one. Yeah, but Deacon thinks that, that maybe not little Deacon, because Deacon's small, but maybe because Vera, big, tall person, uh, maybe Vera could stand on the plate that doesn't have a stone on it, and then we'd be able to open the sarcophagus. You know what, that's not half a bad idea. Yes, I agree, Deacon. Well done. Do you think this will work? I have absolutely no idea. But, uh, I don't have any better ideas, so we might, we might as well do what the Cobalt says, I suppose. Alright, then. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to Let's Play Neverwinter Night Shadows of Undrentide, where things have taken a turn for the worse. Our caravan has once again sort of broken down because we've run out of water and we can't feed the oxen any water because uh, the local oasis has been dried up by an evil necromancer lich type guy, presumably. Um, the local tribes people have tasked us with defeating said evil necromancer um, so that we can hopefully return the oasis to its previous self, so we can all get some water and not die of thirst in the middle of the desert. Um, the task has fallen to us, because of course it has, and uh, we are here in the tomb of Al-Rahim, where we wish to recover some sort of weapon from his sarcophagus, um, which we can use to defeat the, the, the necromancer. However, there seems to be some sort of puzzle stopping us from actually achieving this. However... We're going to follow Deacon's suggestion, which is to drop the rune stones I simply can't carry on this. the tiles in an X pattern and then stand on the missing tile. Or where the missing stone would be. Means we need to go and recover the final stone, which is over there. And yes, yes, we're over encumbered as usual. There we go. And we drop this here. And then we stand on here. And maybe that'll do it. Although. Um. Deacon, I think I need you to move. I think you're a little bit in the way. I need you to not be standing on that, that tile there. There we go. That opened it. Well done, Deacon. Oh, yay, Deacon's so happy Deacon figure out the puzzle. And inside we have the Desert's Fury. Al Rashid's weapon lay in his crypt waiting for the, the one told of in prophecy. Its main purpose is to destroy undead. So it's a staff. It's a magic staff. Um, special properties are damage bonus versus undead. 1d8 fire damage. Enhancement bonus versus undead plus 2. Enhancement bonus plus 1 in general. Only usable by a sorcerer or by a wizard. It also has 12 uses of uh, flame arrow. Or 3 uses a day. Same arrow, 12, three uses a day. Anyway, um, yeah. So that's pretty cool. Um. Yeah, that's very cool, actually. We have two magic staffs now. Awesome. Let's get a look at it, shall we? Ooh. Very interesting. Well, that will no doubt come in useful. I don't actually have flame arrow as a spell either, so that's pretty nice. Um. Flame arrow is not a bad spell either. But anyway, for now, we want to switch back to our bow, and we want to leave this place. 
And no, we're not going to tidy up the puzzle after leaving. We're going to leave it a big old mess. Um, right. These are the Bed Bedeen warriors who are all injured, it seems, from the fight. Let's go speak again with Al Ali, Ali Ibn Masood. My greetings. Um, I see you have returned, Wanderer. How goes the battle with my ancient foe? I found Al Rashid's weapon. Excellent. Perhaps the time of Kalgaras' doom has finally come. The Bedin shall hold you in honor if you honor your word to us. I pray that Al Rashid's weapon will aid you in the battle to come. May the wings of the flies of a thousand camels speed you to victory. Uh, what? It is all saying in uh, in my part of the world. Uh, oh, oh, I see. Um, good. Uh, I appreciate the kind words. Then you are welcome. These people are a little bit strange. Uh, Deacon has to agree. Deacon doesn't like flies at all. So, we'll have a little look around out here. It's not much to see, really, other than oh, a bunch of zombies. Blow <laughs> yourself, zombies. Summon a Barry. Be able to dispatch these guys quite easily. They are only zombies. There we go. Not a problem. Unfortunately, the zombies do not have any loot for us, and apparently, there's even more. Oh dear. Barriers insisted on going over all the way over there to fight that specific zombie for some reason. I don't really know why. My summon creatures do frequently seem to get completely and utterly out of control, which is quite annoying. There is a lot of them, my goodness. What is Barry gone? There he is. Now, unfortunately, the staff's usefulness will be a bit limited on account of the fact that I don't really want Vera to be up close personal fighting these zombies anyway. But, uh, you know. I may put it on the hot bar for now, however. I'll give it a try, but. I have a feeling it's only going to get us killed. Okay, have we killed them all? I think we have. Oh, there's another door at the back here. Hmm. Interesting. Is there any other areas we can explore around here? You, you whacking with your stick, Vera. There you go. Well, there's a lot of them. Ouch. Because uh, zombies might be pretty low-level creatures that don't pose that much threat to us normally. The problem is... Vera's armor class is so low that even these guys probably pose a significant threat to her well-being, as you can see. They are not having too much trouble hitting her at all. Deacon probably would have much less trouble dealing with them in close quarters, but Deacon, as you've seen, insists on hanging back constantly all the time. Which I suppose is fair enough. Oh, interesting. Where does this go? Come inside and meet your death, mortal. You look very deep down there. Are the valiant heroes cross the bridge with trepidation? Deacon is very glad to have Vera Blake in his side. Hmm, so is this the place? 
House of the Morning Lord. Okay, so that's the House of the Morning Lord. I think this is the tomb we want. Yeah, this is the tomb of Kelgaras. Alright, this looks far more impressive. I'm going to go back to the House of the Morning Lord first, though. I just want to check it out before we go any further. What is our armor class at this point? It's four, yeah, it's 14. It's really, really not very good at all. It's quite, quite awful, really, considering we're at uh, level 7. So, we'll have a little rest. Free healing at the end of the day. And then we'll pop inside the House of the Morning Lord, Lathander, and see what's what in there. Won't be full of undead, in which case we'll get rid of them. Oh yeah, it's full of it's full of undead. There's loads of the buggers. Good heavens. Alright, summon a Barry. And get hit in the face. that work? It did work. Excellent. Your familiar is dead. Oh dear. You may wish to fix that situation. State of affairs. There we go. You're doing great, Barry. I think I am going to upgrade him to a dire wolf next level though. Quite possibly. Or a dire bear, to be honest with you, if that option opens up. A dire bear would be fantastic. Who needs a fighter when you've got a dire bear? Right, well done, team. Did we get them all? No, there's one left. <laughs> Deacon singing. Yeah, all right, yeah, we go. <laughs> well, we did it, everyone. This is the altar. And it's upon that we need to place something of Kelgaras's. I forget what. The Rod of Blight, was that it? Yes. Kelgaras possesses a rod which contains its evil soul. If it can be brought out of the tomb and placed on the altar to Lathander, Kelgaras will finally be destroyed and the curse broken. Yes. This is correct. That is the side door we could have come in. Although, is it? No, this one's barred from the other side. That's the side door. Interesting. What about this one? And that one. Also barred from the other side. Yeah, that leads back outside. Well, let's rest. Now we have cleansed the temple. Sort of. I mean, there's, you know, broken furniture and blood everywhere still, but hey. You know, Vera's not a cleaning lady. She's a sorceress. For heaven's sake. The Bedeen can take care of that. Right. Onwards then. To the tomb of Kelgaras. Right after we summon Barry again. Welcome back, Barry. Shame I can't summon two Barrys. Or even a Barry the Badger and a Barry the Boar. That would that would be interesting. Although I, I imagine it would quickly get out of hand if you could do that. Summon an entire horde of creatures. But, you know, that would be fun. I've got to admit. Whatever. Um... Right. Enter the tomb of Kelgaras. Oh, it looks very evil indeed. Also, we've just got statues, which I have, I'm, I'm quite certain will not remain stationary for very long. Statue feels cold to the touch. Oh, look! It has stats! The statue is of a priest of Jurgle. This is probably what Kelgaras looked like before he became a mummy. Oh, it's a mummy as well. Great. There are ancient runes inscribed on this pillar. The language is unfamiliar, but further study could possibly reveal its nature. 
The runes still have a powerful priest of Jurgle, uh, relating his following statement as both a curse and a prophecy. Netherall shall return. I shall bring it back and rule on high. Oh, that's another one. At what point do the statues come to life and try to kill us? That is the question. Uh, something quite brief and clear. Kelgaras, priest of Jurgle and servant of the Darkest Path. Thoroughly unpleasant individual, one assumes. We could try and destroy the statues or attack them, at least. Um, I do not wish to do so, particularly, but hey. Has this track got a certain number of uses, or what? Doesn't look like it. Are you quite finished subjecting me to cruel and unusual torture, Vera? Sorry, Colin. We had to be sure one way or the other, and you are functionally mortal, after all. Um, yeah, I guess we're just gonna have to run through this, since we have no way of disabling this. So we didn't bring Dorna with us, and I believe Deacon has no method of doing such a thing, so, you know. Handle trap, maybe? Can't disarm this trap, my skill's not high enough. Oh. No, well, we can't then. Um, so... Just have to run past it then. Oh, and then get immediately killed by the skeletons waiting on the other side. This is quite an evil layout, I've got to be honest. That is that is merciless game. That is that is not fun at all. It appears that some creatures have passed through this area recently. The nature and a number of these intruders is unclear. Indeed. Perhaps if we destroy the statues? That'd be help if we could actually hit them. Wow, it's a statue, Vera. How the hell are you missing? Don't know. Uh. Out of curiosity, will we get XP for destroying the statues? Uh. Ah. Oh, I did disable the trap. We did indeed get experience points. Marvelous. Well. I suggest we rest. Ah, but can we rest while there are these statues watching us? That is the question. Probably not. I suggest we therefore destroy these statues. I mean, they're inevitably going to come to life at some point, right? As well, destroy him. Oh, it was alive for a second there. Well then, everyone, we beat up some statues. <laughs> Now I suggest we rest. Really? Really? Really, game? Really? There we go. Now I can rest if I stand right here. Resting is now allowed. Okay. 
Let us continue. Let us also summon Barry again. And now let us deal with these annoying skeletons. Oh, they're not very they're not very tough skeletons. Just need to hit them. They go down pretty quick, it seems. There we go. I'll put you in your place. Deacon, feel free to uh, you know get involved. I always get my way. Oh, zombies. Brilliant. Let's deal with these archers first. The archers are a problem. Well, that's a zombie. Right, let's retreat back down here. Summon Colin out on the bridge here. And resummon. Sorry, summon Barry out on the bridge and resummon Colin here. Um, negative energy burst. Not very useful against undead. In fact, if you hit undead with negative energy, it actually heals them. So we don't want to do that. But we're doing pretty good so far. And Barry is dead again. And so is Vera going to be in a minute if she's not very careful. Right then. Skellington archers. Let's deal with them. Go now, it's just the zombies. Which we can quite easily deal with. Marvellous. Well done, Deacon. Okay. So. And we have more gargoyle statues and statues that need to be destroyed. Well, that's okay. Skeleton's knuckle, inflict moderate wounds. The caster succeeds in striking an opponent with a touch attack. The target suffers 2d8 points of damage, plus 1 point per caster level. To maximum of plus 10. Inflict spells have a reverse effect when used on undead, causing the targeted undead to take an amount of healing equal to... Yeah, alright, we're not going to be using that anytime soon then, eh? Um... Right. And a headstone. The language is ancient Netherese, and the inscri inscriptions speak of four elder priests of Jurgel who are buried at this spot, ga going on for some length the, the nature of their foul deeds. The priests were named Zephid, Amadus, Isaral, and Kimish. All dedicated their immortal soul and bodies to the defense of this tomb upon their deaths. Uh -oh. Lovely. Should we just destroy these? I think I've run out of acid arrows. That's a shame. Good, and this one. Ouch. I always get my way. Hit by this thing. There we go. Alright, we're gonna need to rest after that. As soon as the battle music concludes. 
sure these knuckle bones are useful for something. So we'll keep collecting them in order to hopefully save ourselves a lot of trouble later on. What a charming place to rest, eh? The screams of the dying and the undead and the wind. The evil spirits. Just wonderful vacation, isn't it? I, this whole trip really is just a package holiday gone really, really terribly, terribly wrong, isn't it? Nevertheless, we shall persevere. Because that's what we do. We persevere. I mean, we're adventurers in the Forgotten Realms, for Christ's sake. It's kind of in the job description, really. Oh, and we have even more undead. Marvellous. Uh, feel free to, uh, you know, join in. Barry? No? No? Okay, Colin's now dead. Marvellous. Okay, you're up now, Barry, apparently. I hope you like pain. And now Barry is dead. This is going wonderfully. Perhaps I should start using some magic. Or I can cast haste on Barry. Just for fun. Ah, oh, Spell failure. I was apparently standing just close enough to be hit. Cast on myself. go. We're getting there. Oh, don't die, Deacon. That would be bad. That would be really bad. Zombie Lord. I think you need to die, Mr. Zombie Lord. I think Deacon just healed himself. That's good news, at least. More magic missiles for you, sir. And he's down. Good. We can cast spells so fast when we're hasted. I love it. Ooh, new armor. Miscellaneous thin unidentified objects. A longsword plus one, a healer's kit plus six, and some armor. I simply can't carry all of this. So what have we? Chainmail plus two? Chainmail plus two? Deacon, I have a present for you. There you go. Well, it's changed color when it's equipped on you for some reason. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Not that it matters. It doesn't appear on him. Um, there you go, Deacon. Enjoy. Deacon is so happy. Also, Deacon is really confused. How 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 is it that we const we constantly find uh, armor that is in exactly Deacon's size? Um, I don't really know either, Deacon. It's it's a it's a bit strange, but it's a happy coincidence, is it not? Uh, yeah, De Deacon can't argue with that. Uh, so this chainmail plus one. I simply can't carry all of this. We will put in a magic bag, along with this long sword. Let me have this. A lens a lens of detection. The circular prism enables its user to detect minute details, magically revealing all nearby traps to the user as per the spell find traps. The lens is about six inches in diameter and set in a frame with a handle. Three uses a day of fine traps. Cool. Very cool. Um, okay. I'm having issues here. Can't just click it and put it on there, apparently. That's not going to work. Uh, tell you what, we'll also put that in there for now. Wherever did my other staff get to? Is it in the other one? Yeah, it is. 
We may have need of it in the near future, so... Did that work? It did work, it did work that time. Okay, good. That saved us a bit of carrying capacity, although we are running out of it once again. What are you going to do, though, I suppose? All right. Marvellous. Well, Deacon's got new armour. He's up to AC 24 now. Pretty good. That is pretty good. I'm tempted to give him a, well, equip him with a dagger or something so he gets stuck into combat a little bit more, but uh, at the end of the day, Deacon's pretty damn weak. Deacon has, well, 63 hit points. So, still significantly more than Vera, but it's not that much. Do the level up, really. Some of that bloody cat again. There you are. Hello, Colin. Uh, what does the zombie lord have? Anything else? No? Okay. So what about these other things in here? We have thieves tools plus six. Interesting. And an average spike trap kit. Not so interesting. Some gemstones and what else? This is one tomb we will not feel bad about robbing. And darkness. Okay. What about these? Another potion of law, which we don't honestly need, but hey. Law potions for the law throne. Let's go check out the other door, which is apparently the resting place of these four priests of Jurgle. Who undoubtedly I shall have to fight the reanimated versions of, which will be just charming, I'm sure. Oh, yep, yeah, there's four sarcophaguses. Oh, sorry, sarcophagi. Two plurals, right? And that one's trapped. That one is trapped. In fact, I think they're all trapped. Yep. Can confirm. Definitely trapped. And there's a mummy! And Deacon is very frightened of the mummy! Deacon's gonna roll around and hide in the corner! Um. Well. Let's do a bit of haste. And magic missile that mummy. <laughs> nice. That mummy didn't know what hit it. Okay, so what did we get then? The helmet of discharge. Electrical resistance. Oh, that's pretty useful. Fashioned from the scales of a blue dragon, these helms were designed by Lord Karios to assist his crusades against the evil dragons of the Great Rift. This helmet is going to look ridiculous, isn't it? Yeah, sorry, it is very but uh, you're going to need it in this place. Wonderful. I can't see anything very well in this at all, and I can barely breathe. I also look ridiculous, I'm quite sure. Ah, uh, Deacon thinks great hero look, uh, really strange, actually. I look like the world's most ridiculous space marine. That's what I look like. Uh, he cannot know what that is, but, uh, Deacon agree. Uh, well, it'll help with those electrical traps, at least, so we will wear it for now. Won't help with those spike traps, though. No, oh, we're pinned to the corner by a mummy. And afraid. Oh, God, no, this is horrible. This is going terrifically wrong. Deacon's been hit with mummy rot. Everybody's running away, including Vera. All right, we're, we're back in the back in the game now. Ow. 
Well, maybe it's just incubation or not. Might be wrong, I don't know. We're diseased either way. Maybe we should try the magic staff of undead slaying. I don't know. Well, it's dead now at least, but. Uh, Heal you as well, Deacon. Get rid of that horrible disease. It's a good thing we're a skilled we're a skilled healer. Otherwise, we'd be in trouble. All right, potion of law and an unidentified belt. This is the monk's belt. This simple rope belt, when wrapped around a person's waist, uh, confers increased ability in unarmed combat. The lady hand lady's hand monastery in the Nether Mountains has recently taken to equipping all of their members with this item. Though not nearly as powerful as some of the Netherese weaponry they are rumoured to possess, their recent clashes with the Morumim, Morumim clan of blue dragons has forced the monastery to rely on lesser resources. Usable only by monk. It gives you haste once a day. That's, that's pretty good, you know. Take the healer's kit. Ice bullets we do not need, but we can probably sell. And a circle of death. The circle of death! 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 The circle of death! What does it even do? A wave of negative energy bursts from the target location. The number of enemy creatures is equal to 1d4 per, per caster level. Must take a fortitude save or die. Beginning with those creatures with the lowest hit dice. Creatures with 9 or more hit dice are unaffected. Holy crap. Well, it's not going to work against undead, but against anything else, it's just like, you make the save or you're dead. That is a powerful spell. Very powerful spell. And I would be able to take this a lot more seriously if Vera didn't look like an ultramarine right now. <laughs> 